we did what we had to do at, uh, in the second half to pull the game away, but uh, they, they were a very good basketball team. Coach, you shook up the starting lineup. What was what was the reasoning behind that? Why, J, especially JT? Well, JT was an academic reason. Uh, my players need to do what necessary in the classroom, and when you don't, uh, you don't start or you don't play. So, uh, pretty simple. Coach, what do you think about the overall performance? Uh, Byron doing a little bit of everything, even though he didn't have the best shooting night. Well, Byron missed some easy shots. He usually makes those, but but I was more impressed with his six assists and eleven rebounds. Uh, if we can get that type of production, the all-around play from him, uh, we'll win a lot of basketball games because we everyone knows he can score, uh, but it's the rebounding and, and the playmaking ability that he's really improved with. Does it feel pretty good to start here with a win? Sure. Uh, it's, it's nice to win your first game uh, on your home home floor, and uh, of course, Friday night in a row is an extremely tough place to play. So it was nice to come back to the Galen Center and, uh, and get the first one. You played 11 players before 10 minutes even gone by. Safe to say that you're still kind of figuring out roles and rotations and everything. Well, like four that. of them had two fouls, so that had something to do with it. But I was very impressed with Brendan Taylor off the bench tonight. He came in and made two big threes, really sparked us with energy. And then DJ Haley, the same thing. We just need energy off the bench because sometimes. Uh, we'll go into two or three minute low on, on the defensive end, and, and uh, if we can get that type of production, I don't even care if they score, but Brennan tonight made those two threes and really sparked us. Two games in, what have you learned about your team so far? Uh, well, we, we have a long way to go. Uh, I think we, we play, we, we show flashes where we play extremely well for four or five minutes, and then we need to have some consistency, and a lot of that is our bench. Uh, our starters are not going to play well every night. Uh, hopefully, we'll have consistency with Omar in the low post. I, th I think uh, today was seven for eight. Uh, Friday night, he had shot a high percentage. He's going to be shooting over 80% from the field right now. When you have that uh, type of consistency in low post, we need the guards then to, to do their part. How, how do you like the, the way Omar is playing? Just overall, his his aggressiveness and seeming to want the ball. Under well, I think the he can be more aggressive. Uh, he he had 17 points, six rebounds tonight. I thought he should have had more rebounds. Uh, I thought the other night he should have had 25 points and 15 rebounds instead of 15 and nine. I I think he's still learning. He's made huge improvements in the summer and, and in the fall. I'm very happy with his improvement, but I think there's more in the tank with him. I think there's more potential there, and, and he's got to realize that. If he wants to be a dominant player in this league, uh, he needs to be the aggressor and, and not wait. Uh, he, he needs to, to, to be the first guy to, to box out. Uh, he needs to move on defense uh, when the ball is reversed. He needs to cover both sides of the lane instead of one side of the lane. And, and, uh, and on the offense, we get him the ball in the low post. He, he needs to be aggressive immediately instead of waiting for a second or two because sometimes he doesn't realize how good a player he is or could be. Uh, now, he's made unbelievable improvement. But, but we're pushing him every day. He needs to be even better by, by the next few weeks. Were the number of fouls the product of some of the rule changes we're seeing this season? Well, there were a few times. It was just a lot of it was our uh, understanding or lack of understanding that they like to drive the basketball. And, and sometimes when you have 18 to 23-year-olds, you can tell them for two straight days that the, the other team likes to drive the ball. and. Uh, they don't figure it out uh, as quickly as you might want. So, uh, but what Northridge is very good that they have three guys that have, that have scored a lot of points in their careers, and, and they have four or five guys on the team that can really drive the ball and, and score. So, I think part of that was we, we played some very good drivers, and another part was uh, we didn't figure out how to guard them until parts of the second half. In spite of that, you know they show they shoot thirty three percent for the field. You're obviously doing something right defensively. What stood out to you in terms of the defensive effort and what worked for well, you? I thought we challenged shots very well, and, and then uh, we gave effort. And when you give effort on defense, so our goal was to hold them under thirty five percent from the field, which we did. Uh, we just put them on the foul line too much. Uh, so, so I was happy with our overall defense. What did you think of the tempo offensively? Well, he scored ninety five points. So he can't be too upset. Uh, there were times I thought we turned the ball over, made some. Uh, unwise decisions in transition, uh, but we had 24 assists. Anytime you have 24 assists in a game, that's a lot. And that means you're unselfish. You're sharing the basketball, making the right play. You started Julian and Chaz together. Um, both of the guys really like to push the ball. 
I uh, saw a lot from Chaz, especially. Do you see that as a lineup that you uh, will kind of depend on? Well, both guys forward? have to play for us this year. And whether they start or not, they're still going to play probably about the same amount of minutes. Uh, but I do like Chaz's quickness and speed with the ball. And Julian is uh, not quite as fast as Chaz. Uh, but he's very crafty, and, and he, he can push the ball. He's, he's probably the second fast guy on the team with the basketball in his hands. You had uh, three freshmen almost in double figures tonight. Are you happy with the way they played? Yeah, uh, Rashawn had nine, uh, Nicola 11, and Julian had nine, but he had seven assists. And I'm more concerned with Julian's seven assists and one turnover and two steals. That, that, that's big time right there for a freshman. And Nikola, I thought, really uh, showed showed you guys that potentially uh, he, he's going to be a heck of a player down the road if he keeps working. And Rashawn, he started tonight, and I thought he uh, uh, he gave us great effort. He had two steals, and, and uh, for Rashawn, I'd like him to rebound the ball at, at, a, at a higher rate. Uh, but for his first first home game, thrown into a starting role, I thought he performed great. Let's do one more for Coach. Is there something that Pichon and Strahinia have to do to get back into the starting lineup, or is that just a matchup kind of thing? Well, uh, you know, playing time is earned in practice and in games. And, and um, he's been playing very well all spring. In fact, he started our first game on Friday night because he earned it. Uh, so we need him to play well. And, and uh, so, so it's, it's a game-by-game -game decision. The way I coach, uh, no one's guaranteed a starting spot. No one's guaranteed minutes. You have to perform in the classroom, which you saw tonight, because we had two. one guy especially didn't start. He should have started. And, and then some guys off the bench. So, so you have to produce uh, on the court and in the classroom if you're going to play. Do you think JT got the message? I hope so. JT has been he, he has really been terrific uh, up to this point. And, and uh, we hope that he understands that we're here, we're here to uh, uh, be student athletes. As, as such place as USC, as such a high academic school, and you're gonna waste up, you're gonna waste opportunities if you, if you don't go to class and, and you get your education. Thank you, coach.